Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you what happened to the OpenIPC project six months after I got to know it. Initially, the project was dedicated to creating alternative firmware for outdoor surveillance IP cameras. However, it became clear that these cameras could be used for FPV systems. Most of them use a frame rate of 20 to 35 FPS, and the stream delay exceeds 200 milliseconds. Therefore, the main task of the OpenIPC team was to reduce this delay, and they achieved it by increasing the frame rate. But to do this, it was necessary to study the specific sensor, its data sheet, and conduct many experiments. This led to the creation of the FPV sensor driver. The first test subjects were Chinese high silicon IP cameras, such as the 3516EV200 with the Sony IMX3072 megapixel sensor and its analog, the Goki GK7205 V200. They managed to increase the FPS to 45 frames per second and reduce the delay to 100 milliseconds. At that time, these were the best indicators for Wi-Fi broadcast systems. And already at the end of 2023, the new test subjects were IP cameras on Sigma Star processors, such as a 338Q with an IMX415 sensor and another camera, the 30K with an IMX335 sensor. These cameras are slightly more expensive than the previous ones, but have a faster processor, more pixels, and a higher sensor polling rate. Four MEP lines instead of two, which allows more data to be transmitted between the processor and the sensor per unit of time. The Sony 415 sensor has 8 megapixels and a resolution of 4K and allows polling at 90 frames per second. The 335 has a slightly lower resolution of 5 megapixels and a polling rate of 60 FPS. Looking ahead, I will say that you can achieve any frame rate, but you will have to sacrifice the size of the scan area. For example, for 120 FPS, you'll be using a central part of 720p. And for 90 frames per second, the entire sensor is used, but in binning mode, up to 1080p. Increasing the resolution will increase the delay, as the encoder is limited by the processor's resources. In laboratory conditions, they managed to get a delay of about 30 milliseconds for HD quality. This indicator is one of the most important, allowing OpenIPC to take a leading position in the market of open digital systems. The cameras themselves do not transmit anything, but they have a USB port to which any device can be connected, as long as the necessary driver is available. For example, a Wi-Fi module on the RTL8812AU chip is connected in this case. You can also connect, for example, a 4G radio modem. This chip was chosen because it allows receiving and sending raw radio data. It allows using it as a radio transceiver, bypassing standard protocols. For this purpose, the WFBMG engineers wrote a special driver and software. It listens on a specific port, receives data, and sends it over the radio channel. On the receiving side, the same software transmits this data to the required network port. Now you can transmit OSD telemetry video streams and set up a VPN tunnel, but the tunnel will only work with the original WFBNG software. OpenIPC has integrated some technologies into its firmware. The firmware itself is a Linux image created on the build root constructor, which allows configuring the kernel for the required processor. Configurations can be assigned links to Git repositories, which will be compiled and added to the final image. In addition to external repositories, OpenIPC has many of its own. Mostly these developments are related to sensor drivers and outdoor surveillance systems. In addition to success with the delay, many third-party developers joined the community contributing to the project's development. For example, it was possible to connect a camera with a 30x optical zoom and someone created digital stabilization. 
Here is an example of such implementation. Successful tests have also been conducted on digital image stabilization using computer vision and OpenCV technologies. All processing is done on the receiving side, but on more powerful cameras at home, this can be done directly on board. Now you are watching how this system works. On one side, the picture is without stabilization, on the other, with it. The additional camera effectively has zoom with stabilization, allowing you to see objects during gusts of wind. Although the best option would be to place a gyroscope with an accelerometer on the camera and combine everything into one system. And what about the ground part? It's all good. One of the participants developed software that allows turning a budget DVR surveillance system into a ground station. The DVR allows outputting video through an HDMI or VGA port to a monitor at 60 Hz. Decoding is done by the device's chip, which almost does not add delay to the signal. Community members added OSD slicing and other features. A more detailed technical video is on my channel. Another version of the receiving station was created on the Radix A03W development board with the ROG chip RK3566. Its advantage is that it monitors with a frequency of 120 Hz and can be connected to HDMI. The high frequency significantly reduces video delay. This is because there is no synchronization between the sensor and the monitor screen, unlike in analog systems. OpenPC is currently discussing how to solve this problem. We need a technology similar to AMD FreeSync. 03W has less functionality than my Orange P5 Plus, but it is compact and cheaper. Overall delay and picture quality are the same. OP5 Plus will be useful for using neural networks and other experimental work. Thus, a Linux image with a configured system was created for this single board computer, slightly easing the configuration for beginners. In the meantime, several hardware engineers joined the project. They initially designed a PCB similar to the GK725V200IP camera with the sensor brought outside. The sources in the scheme are on the project's GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. Furthermore, OpenIPC, together with a Hong Kong company, developed a flight unit with the Sigma Star SSC338Q processor with an external IMX415 sensor. The main board size is 32 by 32 millimeters, and 19 by 19 millimeters is the sensor board size. One side houses the video processing chip and the other side has the RDL8812AU based radio module with power amplifiers up to 1200 milliwatts allowing for long distance flights. About 120 such devices were released in the trial batch, priced up to 90 USD and sold in 32 countries. Maximum feedback was collected, research conducted, and a new device release prepared. In the new version, the sensor board size is only 14 by 14 millimeters, with the default sensor being the IMX335. Planned delivery date is the end of July 2024. Another good news is the introduction of OIBS into the Ruby FPV UAV control software. As I understand, it's a ready-made product that displays video telemetry and allows you to control camera settings remotely. It is recommended for beginners who are not familiar with Linux. 
Recently, I learned from the OpenIPC Telegram channel that one of the participants assessing the output of the image to a 3D virtual reality headset called Quest 2. And he succeeded, but only in windowed mode. Work is now underway on full screen mode. Essentially, the headset is the same as a smartphone, but with two OLED displays. A Wi-Fi adapter connects to it. And now you have a ready-made ground station for very little money. The glasses themselves run on the Android operating system. By the way, about Android, there was an update on the Wi-Fi driver, which does not require root rights on the device and can work with any phone or tablet. The main thing is that it has enough power for video stream encoding and decoding. This allows you to turn any Android device into a ground station. And also sound has been added. Now you can hear what is happening on board. I don't know who needs this, but long-range flyers have been begging for this feature to be added. As I was creating this material, one of the community members made the OpenWRT firmware, which allows turning a Wi-Fi router into a ground station and distributing video streams over the network to several devices simultaneously. So the OpenIPC project is developing very quickly, but exists only thanks to enthusiasm and developers' own funding. I don't know how to fix this. The guys have already been offered to buy the project, but they still believe in their own strength. Therefore, if you have the opportunity to support, here's a QR code, and I will also leave a link in the description. There is a regular payment of $5 or a one-time sponsorship. The guys will be happy to receive your support. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Bye, everyone.